So when you asked me to uh, to moderate on this uh, webinar, I was um, yeah I was an enthusiastic to do this because um, so far I've, I've made a few few NOAs, um, no extensive clinical studies yet, but I was very enthusiastic about the design of the uh, of the uh, the appliance, the uh, the space it it uh, yeah, occupies in the oral cavity, um, very. Uh, Nice that there is a, a full 3D workflow with the system. Um, and the feature I really uh, like is the fact that uh, I, I like working with my oral devices with uh, vertical elastics. Uh, and we're, we've got some studies showing the, the, uh, the added value of ver vertical elastics and, and uh, keeping the vertical you know, uh, limited. Uh, and I was very uh, enthusiastic about the uh, NOAA that incorporates this feature in a very, uh, you know, uh, well uh, thought uh, design in the in the system. Um, the temporal mandibular joint is also an additional feature, which is, uh, you know, for me, the temporal mandibular joint wasn't usually a uh, that much of a problem because most patients I treated uh, did not develop. Uh, severe TM, TMJ, but I, I usually uh, stay away from those patients who have active temporal mandibular joint disorders. And, uh, and it could be that we now have a system that also has potential for these patients uh, and, and potentially even, even for our conventional patients as well. Um, so um, with that in mind, I um, would like to introduce to you um, Dr. Eduardo Vasquez. Um, who is uh, you know, a doctor in dental surgery, um, mainly a, a oral facial pain uh, dentist uh, with a master in, in oral facial pain on the uh, University of Kentucky, uh, also a PhD um, uh, at the University of Barcelona. Um, uh, Dr. Vasquez is the, uh, has been the president of the Spanish Society of Cranial Manipulatory Disorders and Oral Facial Pain uh, and also was the past president of the European Academy of Cranial Mandibular Disorders. Um, he was very much involved in the development of the NOAA system, um, and I would like to give uh, Dr. Vasquez the next couple of half an hour to maybe even longer uh, to tell us something more about this system, and please feel free to pose your questions as we proceed during the, uh, the presentation of Dr. Vasquez. So, we're going to try and uh, answer them, uh, of have them answered by uh, Dr. Vasquez as we uh, as we proceed. So, uh, Dr. Vasquez, uh, please uh, tell us more. Well, uh, it's it's uh, good evening to everyone again. Uh, it's uh, a real privilege for Orthopnea and myself that someone with the expertise and knowledge of uh, Dr. Arnau Hokema is uh, uh, hosting this this uh, webinar, this presentation about a, a, a device that we feel is going to be a breakthrough in the, in the field of uh, dental uh, sleep medicine. As you know, the, the topic of uh, today's presentation is Orthopnea NOA, the new era in MAD. Uh, first of all, before starting my presentation, I want to give just uh, a few uh, comments about the uh, uh, OrthoPlus group. Uh, uh, OrthoPlus group has four divisions that cover a wide range of dental solutions, has four divisions, ortho, ortho plus, grupo dental, ortho amnia, alinea then, and for DI medical. And ortho plus has gradually uh, set itself as an inter international benchmark, thanks to a large investment in, in research and development, especially in the field of uh, dental sleep medicine. Uh, uh, Orthopnea, the, the Orthopnea division has a, uh, a broad expertise in the field of dental sleep medicine. Actually, uh, the first Orthopnea device was developed already in, in the year 2007. And the Orthopnea classic device that most of you uh, already know was the, uh, um, launched into the market in the year 2014. In the year 2016, the Orthopnea division uh, uh, started a, a collaboration project a research project with the uh, mechanical engineering department of the University of Malaga for the development of a new uh, mandibular advancement device. Uh, this device is called NOAA, and the NOAA has been launched uh, in the year uh, 2020. The Orthopnea division has treated more than 50,000 patients 
35 more than 2,500 doctors, uh, has more than 130 international partners and is present in more than 40 countries. So uh, the contents of my presentation are going to be the following. I'm going to make a very brief introduction. And most of you are experts in the field of dental sleep medicine. So I'm going to make a very uh, brief introduction into what is a MAD and why MADs work. But uh, uh, immediately I'm going to enter into the, uh, uh, how the orthopnea NOA device has been developed. Then we'll make a very short uh, break uh, uh, so that we can answer some questions regarding uh, the development of the device and how the device itself is engineered. And uh, after that, we'll go into more the clinical aspects of the orthopnea NOA and also about a variant of the NOA that is called the orthopnea NOA TMJ. We'll also uh, make some comments about the uh, Amnia Doc platform and the platform that the orthopnea division uses for the communication between the clinicians and the dental lab. And then we'll make some conclusions about the, the main topics of my presentation. And we'll uh, then uh, Dr. Hokema and, and myself answer uh, uh, any questions that, uh, that you uh, feel that are uh, relevant uh, regarding uh, my presentation. What is a MAD? All of you know uh, what is a MAD. A MAD is a device a, uh, that is fabricated in one or two pieces, basically that has the, uh, the mission of opening the airway of the patients for the treatment uh, uh, of snoring and uh, uh, obstructive sleep apnea. So the efficacy of, of MADS is basically based in the, uh, and the modification of the position of the mandible. The mandible is placed in a protrusive position in, in order to open the airway of, of patients. There are many publications uh, nowadays uh, um, that uh, can uh, uh, that, that state that the efficacy of, of MAD is based basically in this maintenance of the mandibular protrusion. When do we use MADs? Um, MADs are basically used for the treatment of uh, simple snoring and also for the treatment of uh, uh, patients with sleep apnea, uh, basically for uh, patients with uh, an apnea, hypopnea index between 5 to 30. And uh, uh, except in those cases that patients also have a uh, medical comorbidities, like for, for example, cardiovascular disorders that not allow the use of, of a MAD, or they, uh, in these cases, would be uh, preferable to use a CPAP for the treatment of the patients. But also, MADs, uh, as you know, can be used in patients that have a uh, severe uh, sleep apnea that don't adapt uh, to CPAP. And in these cases, um, the mats can also be a, a good option for the treatment of the uh, obstructed sleep apnea problem. But the orthopnea division thought that the current uh, customization degree of mats was uh, clearly insufficient. Uh, as you know, basically, uh, until now, uh, mats uh, have a, uh, um, a limited degree of customization. We can obviously customize the, the device to adapt to the patient's dental arches. We can also regulate most of the devices, allow regulation of the degree of protrusion. And in some cases, we can make changes uh, and make some uh, structural reinforcements on the device. For example, in cases of patients that really broke, and we're afraid that the patients are going to break the device. So we can make reinforcements in this sense and also in some cases make other uh, small modifications in the design of the device. Basically, this is the, the degree of customization that the devices uh, up until now allow. And the orthopnea division thought that this degree of customization was clearly insufficient. We needed to go a step further. And, and because of that, uh, we thought that it was logical to design a device that would adapt to the uh, specific uh, mandibular kinematics of the patient. We thought that the best way to do that was by analyzing the mandibular movements of the patient and also to make an analysis of the patient's temporomandibular joints. So until now, it was the patient that had to adapt to the uh, mandibular and vasic device, to the MAD. And we wanted to turn around this equation and uh, make uh, the MAD adapt to the patient's uh, specific mandibular kinematics. With this idea, the orthopnea division got in touch with the mechanical engineering department of the University of Malaga to start a research project that would end with the uh, development of this new, uh, new map. 
before uh, we started this research project, a thorough analysis of the available maps on the market was performed. You can see, for example, three examples of uh, maps that are currently available in the market. So the, uh, the uh, mechanical engineering department analyzed uh, the individual kinematics of, of these devices to see what were the positive aspects of these devices and what, what, which were the negative aspects of these devices. Well, one of the things that, that, we, uh, that we saw and, um, before and uh, Dr. Hukema ha had mentioned is that these devices, most of these devices were not, were not able to control mouth opening without the use of elastics. So uh, the patients were able to open as wide as they wanted when they were sleeping, unless they, they, the, the clinician uh, placed elastics uh, when using the device to limit this, uh, this the degree of, of mouth opening. Also, some of these devices provoked a mandibular retrusion when opening the mouth. And as you know, this is something negative because it can decrease the efficacy of the device. So uh, this, for example, is a video of how this uh, uh, analysis of the arthrokinematic properties of these devices was, was analyzed. And with this in mind, uh, we, uh, the mechanical engineering department decided to design a, a mat that would uh, overcome uh, these limitations. So the, uh, at the end of the analysis, basically what we saw is that the, the most effective systems were the less comfortable because they really limited the degree of mandibular opening and that sometimes this was really uh, a, a, uh, increased the discomfort for the patient. The most comfortable systems, the ones that allowed a, a wider range of mandibular movements were the, the less effective, basically in some cases because of this degree of mandibular retrusion. Sometimes uh, also uh, we saw that the systems that had uh, bars or screws to uh, regulate the degree of protrusion had more chances of failure because of misalignments or because breakages, for example, where the, the insertions of the bars were or where the screws were inserted into the, into the splints of the mat. None of the devices really had a, uh, a customization to the uh, mandibular uh, uh, kinematics of the patient. So uh, this basically the degree of customization was this regulation of the mandibular protrusion and the adaptation to the dental arches of the, pa of the, of the patient. And obviously this was uh, for, for us was clearly insufficient. <clears throat> so with the idea, uh, the uh, orthognia division and the mechanical engineering department of the University of Mala designed the orthognia uh, NOAA device, which is the device that you can see in the, in, in the slide. So what is the NOAA? The NOAA is a two-piece mat that includes the kinematic behavior of the patient's jaw, of the patient's mandible, of the patient's mandibular movements into its design. So the protrusion control of the, of the, of the NOAA is ensured by two cams that are placed in one on each side of the device, as you can see in this picture. Uh, this, circled, this, this circle in green, this is the cam of the device. These two cams uh, have been optimized so that uh, they always ensure that when the patient opens the mouth, or the mouth, sorry, always uh, the jaw always follows a protrusive path when opening the mouth. <clears throat> so we can say that the NOAA is the first mat that really is designed individually by means of a thorough analysis of the mandibular kinematics of the patient. And here you can see one of the publications that have been result of this. Um, of this uh, research project has been leaded by uh, Dr. Cabrera and Dr. Baitadier and also by Dr. Garcia. And um, this is a really interesting article. I really recommend you to read it. And if you read the article, you will see that it's really sometimes complicated article. At least it, it, it was for me. I had to read the article several times to really understand all the, uh, all the method, all the methodology in order to develop the device. This article is full of equations. And uh, as me, as a simple dentist, uh, I, had, I don't have the enough knowledge to really understand. And my mathematical knowledge is not, is not that, that, that extent. But to make something complicated simple, I would say that this article is divided basically in two, in two areas, two sections. The first section is, uh, is, uh, is a section that is dedicated uh, to, uh, for the design of a mathematical model that would allow us to, uh, to implement uh, this uh, in, individual customization 
to the uh, patient's uh, kinematics, to the behavioral kinematics of the patient. And the, se the second section of the article is in how we implement this, this mathematical model into the design of the, of the map itself. So uh, in order to, to, uh, to uh, create this mathematical model that is going to allow us to, for this uh, uh, kinematic customization of the math, we basically need two things. First, we need to provide the lab a thorough uh, a, 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 a X-ray study. We need to provide a teleradiography or a CBCT. Uh, we are in the process also of doing this with a simple uh, uh, photography to take a picture of the patient. And with this picture, the patient, the, the lab is going to make also be able to make this kinematic customization. But for now, we need an X-ray, uh, uh, teleradiography, and basically with the X-ray, since we have. Uh, a series of uh, anatomical landmarks, like for example, the center of the condyle, the tip of the lower incisor. With this, we are the, the lab technicians are going to be able to calculate the exact size of the mandible. Uh, as I said, we are trying to make these calculations also with a simple lateral, pic uh, lateral picture of the patient. And this system, we think is going to be available very soon, probably in the next two months. Um, once the, 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 the lab technicians uh, uh, have, been, have been able to analyze uh, the, these x-rays and they have calculated the size of the mandible, then we, they also need uh, uh, extra data that I will tell you uh, uh, in the next slide. I want to really make uh, uh, clear that uh, the clinician doesn't have to do anything for the customization. So it's the lab technicians that are going to do all the work. So you only need to provide the x-ray, and in the near future, this picture, the lateral picture of the patient's face for this customization. Now, if you don't provide anything, you can also fabricate, the lab is also able to fabricate the lab, the, the mat, sorry. So this picture of the x-ray is in the, in the event that you want to customize the mat to the individual uh, uh, um, kinematics of the patient. Now you want what we call a standard mat, that just takes an average of the uh, uh, population, general populations, uh, mandibular kinematics, you, do not, you don't need to provide anything. You just need to provide what you, what you basically normally provide, which is the, the patient's arches, the uh, starting point, eh? the, the degree of retrusion, the degree of maximum protrusion, the starting point, and basically that's it. You don't need to provide anything else. And you're going to be uh, uh, obtain a device that uh, uh, provides a, uh, features that are not available nowadays uh, in current uh, uh, maths. So, as I said, for the mathematical model, we need the X-ray or the picture in order to make the kinematic customization. And we also need uh, the uh, range of protrusive movement in the sagittal plane. So preferably we are going to use a George gauge and what we are going to do with the George gauge is provide the maximum degree of protrusion and the maximum, the maximum degree of mandibular retrusion. And with, with this information and with the uh, picture or the uh, teleradiography, the lab is going to be able to calculate the uh, uh, individual uh, kinematics of the patient's mandible. Uh, why do we, uh, what do we really obtain? So we, we really obtain uh, the Pocell's diagram of that individual patient. You know that the Pocell's diagram is the, uh, all the area that is able to cover the, uh, the tip of the lower incisor uh, and doing the mandibular movements uh, in the sagittal plane. Okay, so we get the individual uh, uh, Pocell's diagram of that patient by providing the X-ray or the photography and the uh, degree of protrusive movement in the sagittal plane. Now, once we, we know how the patient uh, mandible moves, then we need to decide what would be the ideal path that the lower incisor uh, has to follow when the patient opens the mouth with the mat. Now you can see in this picture uh, uh, the representation of the patient's mandible and the Pocell's diagram of, in, of, of an individual patient. And you can see also a path that goes from point P1 to P9. Now the, the ideal path would be a path that would uh, always make that the mandible follows a protrusive uh, a movement while opening the mouth. Now, in this case, P1 would be the starting point, the starting point that you have decided, let's say 50, 60, 70%. And then that protrusive path would always 
uh, allow the demandable protrudes when opening the mouth. Now, P1 will be uh, the, uh, in this case, the maximum degree uh, of, uh, of protrusion and that particular uh, uh, degree of mouth opening. Now, the, as Dr. Kukema mentioned previously, uh, the NOAA is a, is a device that is able to control uh, mouth opening without the use of, el of elastics. By default, the, uh, the, the NOAA is designed so that the patient is able to open around 10 millimeters with, uh, when opening the mouth. So the patient is going to be able to open 10 millimeters. Now, if you want, you can also modify this. Let's say that you want to, to make your patient only open five millimeters. By default, the lab is going to allow the patient to open 10 millimeters with the device. But if for whatever reasons, clinically you decide that the patient needs to only open five millimeters or even less, you can tell that to the lab and they will uh, modify the design of the lateral cams that will, in this sense, uh, limit uh, the degree of, 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 uh, of mouth opening. Now you have to think that the NOAA provokes mandibular protrusion when opening. And approximately the patient is going to be able to open 10% more than the starting point that you have decided. So by default, let's say that you have decided that to start with a 60% starting point. When the patient is at 10 millimeters of a mouth opening, which is the by default what the, 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 the device allows of, of mouth opening, the patient is going to be 10% uh, extra uh, of, of protrusion. So starting point will be 60% at at 10 millimeters of mouth opening, the patient will be, let's say, at 70% of protrusion. Okay, so once we know the path that we want our patient to follow when opening the mouth, then we need to, uh, to translate this into the design of the cam. And for, for do, uh, in order to do this, we need to use a mathematical model called instant center of rotation. Now, you know that the instant center of rotation allows us to calculate the movement of any given point of, 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 any, uh, of any structure. Okay, so in this, in this sense, once we know the instant center of rotation of the mandible, and obviously this is calculated by the lab technicians, we, we don't need to do that in this sense. Once we know exactly the path that the lower incisor is going to follow when opening the mouth, that path that goes from point P1 to P9, we know exactly uh, 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 the movement of any other point of the mandible, uh, of the mandible when, the man, uh, when the mandible is moving from that point P1 to P9. Why do we need to, do, uh, to know this? Because what we want is that the, the inside profile of the cam uh, uh, really follows, is designed, the curvature of this, of this profile really mimics the, the path that goes from point P1 to P9. So we can say that uh, the, mandibular, the mandibular kinematics of the patient are, 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 are designed into, uh, uh, into the design of the cam. So when the mandible moves from point P1 to P9, uh, the, uh, the, the curvature of the cam uh, really follows that path. And you can see, for example, in, in this picture here, that uh, the, the, the shape of the, the, the inside profile of the cam really uh, has the shape that, uh, that from the path that goes from uh, point P1 to P9. So as I said, the inside profile of the, of, of the cam is based on the mandibular kinematics of that particular patient. Here you can see a front view of, of the cam. Something also very interesting from the NOAA is that you can also customize the degree of lateral movement. By default, the lab is going to allow between two to three millimeters of lateral movement. But let's say that for whatever reason, you feel that the patient needs to have a wider lateral movement, a broader lateral movement in that sense, you can also uh, uh, request that to the lab and the lab will increase that degree of lateral movement, let's say five millimeters, for example, because the patient, for example, is a big boxer and you want the patient to be able to have a wider degree of lateral movement. The cam is designed in a way also that allows a, a very uh, easy removal from the mouth. If we see the, the, the cam from a sagittal uh, view, where you will see that this, this curve, the inside profile of the cam is going to change 
according to the mandibular kinematics of the patient. So this profile is not going to be the same for all patients. It's going to change depending on the individual kinematics of the patient. Also, the height of this, uh, of this camp is going to change according to uh, the, the, the needs uh, of the patient. By default, the, the height of the cam is going to allow 10 millimeters, as I said, of mouth opening. But if you want to change this degree of mouth opening, you just need to tell this to the lab and the lab would change uh, the, the, the size of the cam to allow less uh, uh, mouth opening or even more if for whatever reason you decide that this is beneficial for the patient. If we see uh, also the cam from a top view, uh, uh, you will see that the inclination of the cam can, can be adapted to the morphology of the patient's oral arches. And for example, if you feel that there is a deviation of the, of the, of the midline uh, of the dental arches, you can also request a change in the orientation of the cam. Let's say, for example, that the patient uh, in uh, maximum retrusion has a deviation, let's say to the left side of one millimeters. And when the patient is in maximum protrusion, you feel that the deviation is, say, three millimeters to the left side. You can provide this information to the lab, and the, the lab will change the orientation of the cams depending on the deviation from the mid lane to ensure a better uh, uh, movement of, of both temporomandibular joints. Also, since the, the, uh, the, the mat is designed with CAD cam, we can make really a really thin and uh, uh, small device, which obviously increases uh, the patient's comfort. So here you can see some pictures of the of the of the NOAA, the cam from a front view, from a sagittal view, and from a top view. Really, the the NOAA allows a really big uh, degree of customization. Um, by default, we have what we call a uh, standard sequence. I'm getting just in a minute of what we call a standard sequence. And, but also we can customize uh, these, uh, the order of the NOAA and to customize uh, the, the, the sequence uh, for, uh, for the treatment of our patients. This will be the uh, standard sequence. And by default, the lab is going to send you the starting point, let's say 50, 60, 70% of uh, mandibular protrusion. Um, we're going to have two extra splints. Uh, we have one upper splint and we have four lower splints. We have two extra splints that go in a protrusive sequence by default plus one millimeters or, or plus two millimeters and by default also minus one millimeter. Now, if you want, you can order these increases by percentage and, and not by millimeters. Let's say that you say, okay, I want to sign my treatment at 60% and I want my next splint to be 70% of protrusion and my next splint to be 80% of protrusion. You can also ask the lab and they will provide uh, the sequence uh, uh, this way. Now, if you feel that you're not going to have, uh, now you can, uh, sorry, you can also modify this sequence. So you can say, okay, I want to start my starting point, let's say 50%, and I want my three extra splints to go only in a protrusive sequence. You can do that also if you want. Now, uh, if you feel that you're not going to have enough with uh, four splints, you can also request extra splints, up to seven uh, lower splints you can request. You can also uh, ask for, uh, uh, initially, only for the standard sequence, and for whatever reason, um, you, um, you don't have enough with that and you need to add extra splints, you can order that, those splints one by one. You don't need to, or, to uh, the first time order the, the seven or the six splints. You can order only four splints and then add additional splints as you need uh, according to uh, the, uh, the, how the patient uh, treatment evolves. So we can say that really the NOAA is the only device that uh, really truly causes mandibular protrusion when opening the mouth. So the NOAA provokes mandibular protrusion when opening the mouth, provides maximum comfort because allows a wide range of mandibular movements, but with mouth opening control. So the patient is able to open the mouth, but there is a control of this mouth opening. 
In the other devices, many other devices, you need or to use elastics to have mouth opening control, or in devices that there is mouth opening control, there is a really limited degree of mouth opening with the device, which sometimes makes this uh, device uncomfortable for the patient. So here we have, we combine both things. We, we allow the patient to have a uh, sufficient degree of mandibular movement. And also we can limit, we have a limit to this degree of mandibular uh, mouth opening, which obviously increases the efficacy of the device. This device is also made uh, in uh, polyamide 12, which is a very robust material you will see. And the device is uh, fabricated without in one piece. So there's no metal move, uh, moving parts, no bars, nothing that can disadjust, have any misalignments or, and we uh, decrease the possibility of breakages uh, where the screws are or where the, bar, uh, the bars insert into the splints. You know that sometimes in, in those kinds of uh, devices, sometimes there is breakages in, in those areas. With the NOAA, since the NOAA is made in one piece, we, uh, we, we don't have these kind of problems. So the NOAA, as I said, is the uh, only device that on the market controls mouth opening without the use of elastics uh, and uh, maintaining this degree of uh, optimal degree of, uh, of, uh, of, of control of the mouth opening. And we think that because of this and because of the other features, the fact that when the patient opens the mouth follows always this protrusive path, uh, and this will reduce the possibility, the occurrence of side effects, and also may allow us to treat the patients with less degree of mandibular protrusion, obviously then increasing the patient's comfort and also decreasing the occurrence of side effects. You know that mouth control is very opening. This is a very nice study made by Dr. Francesca Milano and other colleagues in which uh, we see the importance of, uh, of uh, mouth control opening. We see that in this case, for example, the number of responders uh, when using the mouth without the elastics was only of 36%. And then when using the elastics, we were limiting the degree of mouth opening, the number of responders increased to 67%. So doubled, almost doubled um, uh, by the use of elastics. And this obviously was because of this mouth control uh, that was uh, uh, um, controlling the fact that the patient when opening the mouth was following a retrusive path and obviously uh, in, in that event, decreasing the efficacy of the device. We have preliminary results of the efficacy of the NOAA. Uh, actually, the orthopnea is uh, running or is going to start running uh, around 10 clinical studies uh, uh, regarding different parameters of efficacy of the NOAA. These are the preliminary uh, data of the NOAA, and you can see that the data is really, uh, really promising, uh, really impressive. In some cases, uh, this is a study, 31 patients. 28 of them were male, three were female. And we can see that uh, in the pre-polygraphic uh, study, we can see that the average uh, apnea hypoapnea index was of 27 for the whole sample. And when using uh, the, the NOAA and then doing the post-polygraphy, we could, we could see that the, uh, the average uh, apnea hypoapnea index was reduced to 6.6. .6. Uh, we can see also that the efficacy uh, in terms of, of, uh, of percentage, 50%, uh, uh, sorry, 91% uh, of the sample had a decrease in the uh, apnea hypoapnea index of, of more than 50%, and 63% of the sample had a decrease of more than 75% of the, efficacy, uh, of the uh, apnea hypoapnea index. You can see also that in the pre-polygraphic uh, study, uh, we had no patients that with, uh, with less than five uh, apneas per hour. We had 12 patients with a mild OSA. We had uh, uh, seven patients with a moderate uh, sleep apnea. And uh, we had uh, 12 patients with a severe sleep apnea. In the post-polygraphic uh, study, we could see that we had no patients with severe sleep apnea, only three patients with moderate uh, sleep apnea and 12 patients with massive sleep apnea and 16%, 16, sorry, 16 patients had no, uh, no uh, a, 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 uh, apnea, hypnea, uh, uh, index 
lower than five. Also very uh, promising uh, data regarding the oxygen uh, saturation uh, uh, features. So you can see that uh, the NOAA is a promising device in this sense with a high uh, uh, degree of efficacy for the treatment of uh, obstructive sleep apnea. Now, uh, Arnaud, uh, I don't know if you want to make uh, any comments about uh, the, uh, the, uh, the slides, the things that have been uh, lecturing since now in my presentation. Do you have any comments? Well, there, there's a few questions from the audience on the uh, already in the background and, and some, of, some of them have been answered already. Um, the uh, there was there is one question is um, um, whether there's evidence uh, that suggests that that customized pattern of opening uh, guided by the cam um, whether that results in more better efficacy or more comfort to the patient and and uh, that is the specific question uh, that, uh, when the the attendee. Uh, 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 one of the um, attendants uh, poses is, is what what is the evidence that you know the the, the uh, specific uh, features that the knowers offers uh, uh, how does that um, result in more eff efficacy and and comfort so you well so far there there's no randomized studies and, and I think that's the background of this this question um, uh, could you comment on that yeah um, um... We are currently running studies regarding that. And I think that very soon we are going to have information regarding that. And the, the, uh, the data that we're seeing from the patient is very positive. Actually in this study, really the degree of discomfort the patients was really low. I mean, I think that the, really the patient, uh, that, that, that really the, the device really adapts to how the, the patient's job moves, uh, has to in some way improve uh, the uh, the possibility of, of or the reduction in the possibility of the of, of the occurrence of side effects, as I will mention later in my presentation. Also, this uh, degree of customization allows us, uh, in some cases, to treat uh, patients with uh, temporal mandibular joint dysfunction, which obviously this means that this degree of customization. Um, is able to uh, allow the NOAA to treat patients that are uh, with uh, temporal mandibular joint pathology that will not be able to treat with other devices. And also because of this customization and the other features, the, the fact that the patient always follows a protrusive path allows us to treat the patient with less protrusion. Because if, if we, let's say that we're starting at, uh, in other devices, if we start with a starting point at 60%, when the patient uh, is with a, uh, with, uh, opens the mouth, let's say with elastics, in some cases it's going to a more retrusive position, or if you're, you, you're using elastics, you're, uh, you're, you're not allowing the patient to open the mouth, you're restricting mouth opening. Elastics in some cases, as you know, can be, uh, create discomfort to the uh, uh, muscles, uh, the mandible muscles, especially in patients that already have uh, a, some degree of muscle pain. So the fact that we allow the mandible to open, that we allow that the patient has this, this, this freedom of opening, but limited to those 10 millimeters, as I said, uh, increases this uh, patient's uh, comfort with no doubt, uh, uh, from my opinion. Now, if you want specific and, and, and something very important, if we, in the, with the NOAA, we start, let's say with 50% of, of mandibular protrusion which is a very moderate, moderate degree of protrusion, we know that when the patient opens the mouth and is at 10 millimeters of mouth opening, the patient is really going to be at 60% of mandibular mouth opening. But we also know- yeah. So in, in the clinical study you just showed in this last slide, was, what, what was the average amount of protrusion percentage wise? Uh, I, 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 I think I recall that the, the average was around 60%. Okay. But but uh, the, we, you have to think that 60% is the starting point. And uh, in, with the NOAA, that means that when the patient opened the mouth to 10 millimeters, they were really at 70%. But they don't have to be at 70% all the night because in some, in some moments we bring them out, when they have the mouth closed, they're going to be at 60. And when they open the mouth, which you know that in some cases can decrease the efficacy of that device, they are going to go to that protrusive position which is 
So in, in some moments of the night, they're going to be at 70%, some moments of the night, they're going to be at 60%. But we, do, we don't oblige the patient to be always at 70%, in which we feel that this is going to uh, always provide more comfort for the patient and obviously also de decrease the possibility of, of the occurrence of side effects. Now, if you want specific data, a randomized clinical uh, the trial on this specific uh, uh, appearance of side effects, we don't have the data yet. Okay, so we're running a clinical study and probably we, will, we are going to be able to provide that specific data uh, very near in the future. Uh, a second question uh, that uh, came in was um, whether the uh, device can be built with an anterior stop and no posterior contact. So uh, could you comment on that? Um, um, I uh, really, I, we, we, we haven't thought that 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 is uh, so you you mean that the the patient only contacts in the front teeth and the, yeah. there's no contact in the back teeth that's what you're saying yes I um, think that's the question yes yeah well uh we we have not designed the device in that sense i don't particularly my opinion my my modest opinion i don't think that this is something that can be good for the temporal mandibular joint i think that is it, it's uh it's it's more reasonable that uh, especially if the patient, for example, braxes, I, I think is good for that there is a good mandibular stability. And I think that for the temporal mandibular joint, it's better that there is a, a posterior uh, a support. So no, we, we haven't thought of, of that particular design for the, for the NOAA. Okay. Okay, well, um, I would suggest we proceed with the second part because the um, clock is ticking. Okay. Thank you, Arnaud. So let's go to the, ne to the next slide then. And so what do we need really to, to place uh, uh, the, the order of orthomiano? I really, you don't need to, to provide anything different than when you're currently providing, uh, you're currently sending to the lab to, for the current uh, devices that you're using. You need obviously the dental impressions of the patient that can be with uh, regular impressions with silicone, or you can use an intraoral scanner. Uh, you also need, a, obviously, an intermaxillary record, uh, preferably with a George gauge. Can be done with uh, other methods, but we prefer the George gauge so that you also provide the um, degree of maximum retrusion and a degree of maximum protrusion. And uh, you can also enter all this information into the apnea doc uh, platform, although this is not strictly necessary. So you can also provide to this information directly to your local lab and the local lab will uh, make the uh, customization or the, or the design of the device for you. Uh, I'm not going to go into details on how to use the George gauge. Most of you are experts in the field of dental sleep medicine, so you, you know perfectly well how the uh, George gauge uh, works, but we feel that it's a device that is uh, necessary or is preferable for the, uh, for the bite registration of the patients. So what do I get with this? Well, uh, you get really a, uh, a unique mat, I think, because uh, you get a mat that is customized to the mandibular biomechanics of, of each individual patient. We feel that is a very comfortable device for the patient because of this, uh, this uh, allows this degree of, 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 of mandibular movements, but I always, I make very, a lot of emphasis in this with mouth control open. And uh, you have a unique communication platform with the Apnea Doc platform. And the mat really has a really high level of quality tailoring. It's made with Polymid 12, it's designed with CAD CAM. So the, uh, really the degree of quality tailoring is really impressive. Um, the NOAA is fabricated in a 100% biocompatible material uh, that is called Polymid 12 which uh, uh, as you know, most of you know, it has great features in terms of resistance and fracture. Really, it's really difficult material to, to break and to really deform you know, to make a deformation of the, of, of, of the device. As I said, the, the device doesn't have any metal connectors or bars or, or screws, which uh, could lead to misalignments of the device or breakages in uh, where the bars or the screws are inserted in the splints. Uh, the noise made in one piece in this sense, or, or it breaks or it doesn't work, uh, break, but it doesn't make any disalignments and it really doesn't break. It's a really robust uh, device. 
then also, then also complies with the European Medical Device Directive by meeting the class one specification. We have different degrees of customization. So let's say that you want to go what we call the basic level. I want to use the NOAA like I'm using the other devices. I just want to provide the uh, measures, the impressions of the, of the patient's uh, dental arches. I want to provide the bite registration and that's it. And I'm going to send this information to the lab. What do I obtain? Well, the lab uh, customizes the mandibular kinematics to the average uh, uh, population, to the, the, the average kinematics of the general population. Uh, before, uh, during the development of the, the NOAA, made a lot of calculations on how was the average of the, of the general population's kinematics. And we use this for what we call the basic level of design. Now, with this basic level of design, you, you still have mouth opening control and customization. So you want the patient to be able to open less than 10 millimeters. You can provide this information. You can customize it. In this sense, you can customize the degree of lateral movement also. So you have still a, a big degree of uh, customization but the kinematics uh, that uh, the, the, the device provides is in average of the general population. Now, if you want to go a step further and really individualize the device to the uh, particular kinematics of the patient, then you need to provide the uh, lateral x-ray. Now, uh, very soon, as I said, with a simple uh, picture of the patient in a sagittal view, so side, uh, side picture of the patient, uh, uh, both sides and a front picture of the patient that, that can be done in, in a minute, it's really fast. We're going to be able also to make this uh, uh, kinematic customization. So you're not going to uh, need to provide the telegraphy, teleradiography, sorry. Now, uh, if we go to this level, we, we, we take an average of, uh, of the patient's temporal mandibular joints because obviously these are 2D images. So we need to make an average of the kinematics of, of, of uh, for both temporal mandibular joints. Now you want to go a step further, uh, and you need to provide the CVCT, and then we can individualize the movement for each temporal mandibular joint. Now for regular sleep apnea patients, I think you can stick with basic level or level one. I don't think you need to go to the level two or level three customization. Now we feel that level two or level three should be for patients that uh, besides uh, uh, sleep apnea also have uh, uh, temporal mandibular uh, disorders. They have muscle pain disorders, they have temporal mandibular joint pain disorders. In, this, uh, in these cases, uh, I think that you, you shouldn't be limited to use the mat. You can use the mat in many cases, but I think in, if uh, you have pain, for example, in a temporal mandibular joint and you don't have, let's say any kind of uh, disc condyle uh, problems. In those cases, I think that providing an individual customization to the movement of each temporal mandibular joint should, uh, uh, in that sense, uh, decrease uh, the possibility of increasing, uh, increasing the patient's uh, temporal mandibular joint discomfort. Now, if uh, in the event that the patient has painful clicking in the joint, has painful this displacement with reduction, in this case, we think that you should go to level three and uh, use a variant of the NOAA that is called the NOAA TMJ. And in this, in this case, uh, uh, we, have, we can also provide a protocol and an MRI protocol uh, in order to find uh, the best uh, 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 discondyle relationship uh, for the patient. Uh, so we know in, in with protrusion, we want to uh, treat a patient, but also uh, we want to know uh, uh, in, in which degree of protrusion uh, will be more favorable for the discondyle relationship. So only sleep apnea problems, basic level or level one, temporal mandibular joint discomfort uh, and sleep apnea level two and uh, painful clicking, this displacement with reduction and sleep apnea problems, then level three. So, uh, uh, as I said, we're in the process of developing this uh, uh, protocol uh, that will allow us to make the uh, calculations for the uh, kinematic customization with a simple picture so that we are able to, uh, to, to know 
the uh, individual Spocell's diagram of the patient. This will be also provided to you. And here are the instructions on how to take these pictures. Uh, we are in the process of validating this protocol and the, it's promising the results that we are obtaining. And we think that very soon uh, we are not going to be uh, needing the X-ray, the lateral X-ray. And with these simple pictures, we are going to be able to make this uh, individual customization to the patient's uh, kin mandibular kinematics. Uh, well, uh, as Dr. Uh, Hokema mentioned, in many cases, in many protocols, uh, when we, we do the uh, uh, examination of the patient and we see that the patient has uh, temporal mandibular joint discomfort, painful clicking, uh, temporal mandibular disorders in general, in many cases, we are afraid of using the device because we think that we may increase uh, the uh, uh, temporal mandibular disorders pathology of the patient by using the mat. And I think this happens basically because we, we, we speak about temporal mandibular disorders as a, as a, a, a homogeneous uh, disorder. And really, uh, temporal mandibular disorders uh, groups a very uh, uh, heterogeneous uh, group of disorders. You have muscle disorders and you have different types of muscle disorders. You have different types of temporal mandibular joint disorders. And in many cases, maybe, it will mean not a good idea to use a mat in those patients, at least initially. I think probably in most cases, in the medium or long term, you're going to be able to use the mat, but in some cases you need to treat first the temporal mandibular disorder problem and then use the mat for the sleep apnea problem. But in some cases, we can even treat both disorders at the same time. And even in some cases, it's going to be beneficial, the use of the mat for the treatment of the uh, temporal mandibular joint disorder. Because really, when we are protruding the mandible, in many cases, we have no idea of the discondyle relationship. And for example, this is a very interesting case that I saw uh, some months ago, in which uh, uh, this is a patient that was completely asymptomatic. When we started uh, uh, the treatment of the sleep apnea problem, the patient didn't, at that moment, uh, refer any uh, mandibular pain in the, in the temporal mandibular joint, in the muscles. The degree of, of mandibular movement was, uh, uh, was sufficient for, for, the, for, the, for the use of the mat. The patient reported that in the, in the past uh, uh, had recalled some, some problems, temporal mandibular disorder problems, but they were completely, uh, and at the moment, the patient was asymptomatic. So we used, we started the treatment of the sleep apnea problem with the mat, and uh, very uh, a few days later, the patient started developing pain in the left temporal mandibular joint. Now, for those that are less familiar with uh, MRI images of the temporal mandibular joint, I would like to mention that this uh, blue line that you see here uh, represents the uh, articular eminence and the fossa. The green line represents the condyle and the uh, uh, orange structure is the articular disc. You can see that all structures are correct, are in place in the right uh, temporal mandibular joint. But if we take a look at the left temporal mandibular joint, we can see that the patient has a disc displacement without reduction. Now the patient was happy, was asymptomatic uh, uh, before using the mat. Now, because we are obliging the patient to be at 60, 70% of mandibular protrusion, seven, eight hours during the night, this is provoking retrodiscal compression because of this displacement without reduction. And because of that, the patient started developing uh, pain in the left temporal mandibular joint. Now, if we had known this before, Maybe we could have started with a, a lower degree of mandibular protrusion, maybe 40%, maybe 50%. And probably this would have allowed the patient to adapt to this situation. We have provoked less retro And because of this, uh, because of less retro compression, uh, probably uh, the patient will not have developed this painful uh, uh, temporal mandibular joint uh, disorder. Now, uh, in this uh, specific MRI protocol that we have developed, we can take, we can take images of the temporal mandibular joint at different degrees of mandibular protrusion. So we can decide in these cases, what will be the most beneficial position uh, for the, uh, for the temporal mandibular joint and combine this information also uh, for the treatment of the sleep apnea problem. You can see here the articular disc that is displaced. Now, 
For the treatment of these patients, uh, of patients that have painful clicking of the temporomandibular joint, they have what we call disc displacement with reduction, sometimes even with intermittent locking, sometimes the patient gets locked and is not able to open the mouth. Sometimes the patient is able to make the click and open the mouth. In these cases, we can combine, we can treat both disorders, the sleep apnea problem, and also the uh, temporomandibular joint disorder with the use of the mat. We've already treated more uh, around 30 patients that with combined problems with uh, uh, very successfully. Um, in this sense, we have made a, a, a variant. We have changed uh, the design of the lateral cams. In this sense, uh, we've, we've done this so that the patient is able to uh, place the device in the mouth, the mat. Once the mat is placed in the mouth, the patient is able to open completely the mouth and provoke the click. So the patient opens the mouth to provoke the recapture of the disc. The disc gets in place when the patient opens the mouth and then the patient closes in a protrusive position, the one that we have decided, 50, 60%, and, uh, and then stays in that position. Now you will say, well, but be, mm, if you do that, there is no mouth opening control. There is some degree of mouth opening control. Why? Because remember that Nanoa always follows a protrusive path. And the more the patient uh, protrudes, protrudes, the less degree of mandibular opening uh, the patient is able to make. So someone is able to open, let's say 40 millimeters of mouth opening from a maximum retrusive position. But when someone is at 60% of mandibular protrusion is not able to open 40%. So the more the patient opens, the less the patient is able to open. So there is, uh, um, there is mouth opening control. And actually, um, the, the, the size, the height of the cam is the maximum height of the cam is around 14, 13 millimeters of, 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 of opening. And we um, I've almost treated, uh, as I said, almost 30 patients with combined problems. And in, any, in, in, no, in none of those patients, there has been a disinsertion of the splints when the patient uh, was opening the mouth when uh, doing sleep. So there's no worries in this sense. And there is uh, a, uh, a mouth opening control because of that. Probably not as good as with the regular NOAA, but sufficient for the treatment of the sleep apnea problem. And also something very interesting is that since the patient always follows a protrusive path when opening the mouth, you always ensure that the disc is never going to get out of place. If you use a device that provokes mandibular retrusion, you may have the possibility that when opening the mouth and the, man the mandible follows a retrusive path, that this could get out of place because the more retrusive the position, the higher the chance that the disc gets out of place. In the NOAA, this is completely impossible since the mandible always follows a protrusive path, always. So this protocol is going to allow us to decide in these specific cases, so patients that have painful clicking of the temporal mandibular joint, this displacement with reduction and sleep apnea problem, we are going to be able to treat both disorders at the same time. Now you have to think that clicking is very prevalent in the general population. So we're going to find a lot of patients with clicking in the journey where we have to use a bat. In many cases, the clicking and noise is not painful, okay? In some cases, it is painful. And if it's painful, we think that we can treat both disorders at the same time. Now, also with this MRI protocol, we can take measurements of the airway volume at each specific degree of protrusion. So for example, let's take a look at these pictures and you will see that, for example, in the right side, you can see mouth close, plus two millimeters, plus four millimeters, plus six millimeters. So since uh, MRI, that, um, uh, it's a very safe uh, image uh, procedure. It's not like a CVCT, which you, you know, you're radiating the patient. You're not gonna take four CVCTs to, the, to, to measure, uh, well, you cannot use a CVCT to, to see the, the disc on the relationship. You cannot see the disc, okay? So this cannot be done with a CVCT, obviously. But for measurements of the, of the, of the uh, airway, to, to take volumes of the airway, you cannot take four images at different protrusions. This is very aggressive in terms of radiation for the patient. But with an MRI, there's no problem. We can take as, as many as we want. There's no radiation. So the patient is placed in the MRI device in the, uh, and 
we tell the technician, okay, we want images with mouth closed, plus two millimeters, plus four millimeters, plus six millimeters. And we know exactly that this condal relationship at each degree of mandibular protrusion. And for example, in this particular case, we can see that the best, the best position is plus six millimeters. So we have a patient with painful temporal mandibular joint disorder, and we are going to place the mandible at six millimeters of protrusion at least. Why? Because when we see the images, we can see that in the right side, the disc gets out of place. The disc is out of place in the right side. Disc for uh, anterior disc displacement with reduction. The, the disc gets reduced at two millimeters of protrusion, but this is a very interesting case. In the left side, we can see that there is a posterior disc displacement. And really, the best disc condyle relationship for both joints is plus six. We can see that at plus six millimeters, the disc is perfectly in place in both temporomandibular joints, which obviously uh, this will help for the treatment of the temporomandibular joint disorder. And also, obviously, this is a good degree of protrusion for the treatment of the sleep apnea problem. Now, as I said, we can take images at each specific uh, uh, at each specific uh, degree of protrusion for uh, for uh, uh, measurements of airway volume. Okay, so for example, and we're taking these measurements with the patient in a supine position because with a CVCT, the patient is not in a supine position, but in this case, it's in a supine position. So we have measurements at two millimeters, at four millimeters, at six millimeters, and we can see whether we are improving, we are increasing this degree of protrusion, there is an opening, an increase in airway volume, or there is no increase in airway volume. So, um, uh, Arno, do you do you want to make any comments on on the information that I had provided so far? Well, there's there's a room for just a few questions, maybe that came from the audience. Um, one is that um, most of them are quite practical, actually. Um, it's a question whether it is possible to integrate um, retention for elastics in addition to the. Uh, uh, to the vertical shim that is incorporated in the, in the NOAA. Can you also add vertical elastic? So I would say to minimize even further mouth opening, is that possible? Uh, well, we, we don't need elastic. So the, the thing is that if you feel that 10 millimeters by default is, is too much, you just tell the lab, okay, I want my patient to be able to open three millimeters, two millimeters. And the, and the lab will design the cam uh, to allow only two millimeters of mouth opening, for example. Another question is, is how are uh, repairs uh, taken care of? So for instance, where, you know, there's changes, crown and bridge work. Uh, do, do we need to rescan um, uh, in all circumstances? Um, what, what is the protocol? Uh, yeah, in general, yes. Uh, in, in, uh, if, if, if changes are small, probably this can be adapted by the lab. Uh, but if changes are extent, okay, in these cases, uh, uh, you will need to uh, to obviously uh, change the uh, or the upper split, uh, upper splint or the lower split. Mm -hmm. Okay, but probably by that time, you already know the, the the correct degree of protrusion. So you will only need to change one of the two splints, or obviously you have made. Uh, uh, treatments, prosthetic treatments, or uh, any, any other of dental treatments in both uh, dental arches, obviously then you need to change uh, both, both, both splints in that case, yes. But if for minor changes, uh, uh, no, you can adapt that, you can make those adaptations. And, and, and the last question um, is, um, so when using a, a basic uh, level of registration, so not level one, two, or three, but just a, a basic, um, Modification, mm -hmm. uh, basic type of, of NOAA um, is the the average of the population used for the calculation. Is that also affected by race? Is there uh, or is it you know a, a, a true average? Well, well, we we have uh, made that with uh, a Spanish population. Okay, so we don't know, uh, and I think that basic all patients basically. I think like, I, I I obviously I uh, I don't have all, all the data now. With me, but I think we're uh, Caucasian patients. Okay? okay, so we don't have that information specifically for other ethnic groups. But uh, this is a very interesting question, actually. And actually, I'm going to 
ask the Orthomia members that are connected to, to really register this question, because this is something interesting also to take into account for further studies. Okay. Well, let's proceed with the, uh, with the final part, and, and, um, which is on the apnea doc. Okay. So, well, uh, my last uh, part of the presentation is going to very briefly uh, explain you the apnea doc platform. Now, uh, um, you don't need to use the apnea doc platform. So, uh, you can uh, provide the information directly to your local lab, um, and they will take care of all the customization. Okay. But in some cases, if you feel that uh, you want to use the Amnia Doc platform, I think that the Amnia platform uh, is a really unique communication platform because it allows interaction between uh, the dental laboratory and the clinician and also, and, and also all the clinicians that are involved in the treatment of patient. Because in the platform, you can have information regarding, for example, the polysomnographic studies, et cetera, and the different members of uh, the, the different clinicians that are involved in the treatment of the patient can have access to the platform and to have a better interaction and improve the, the patient's experience in the treatment. Now, you can request to, through the platform uh, uh, different tests like the Epworth test, the uh, poly polygraphic uh, studies, and also you can introduce all the information for the uh, MAT customization. Now, this will be the, the initial uh, image uh, when you, uh, you get into the uh, navigator. Okay, you need to access to the platform. You will introduce your email and your password. Now, once you're inside, uh, the first thing that appears is the, uh, the, uh, the, the platform complies with all the uh, European regulations uh, regarding data protection. So you have to be, you're safe on that side. There's no problem. So you, this is a disclaimer in that sense. So you agree on this and then you will see uh, in this in this slide, you can see all the different uh, uh, all your different patients uh, and other treatments that you have ordered. Now you can introduce the patient's name, or if you want, just a code. So orthopnea doesn't know even the name of the patient. Okay, you place a code, and obviously you have to know that that code uh, belongs to a, a specific patient. Now. Another uh, interesting area of the apnea doc would be uh, what you see in the slide. This is the, uh, the, uh, the section for the NOAA customization. Here we'll introduce all the data. Now you can go standard, so you don't need to provide information regarding the uh, sequence. For example, you can see that here the sequence is in standard. The type of go, uh, uh, gauge uh, byte that you have uh, use is the five millimeter one, for example. Um, you need to provide, obviously, the maximum degree of retrusion, protrusion, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the starting point. Now, a very nice thing uh, is that when you introduce, for example, you, let's say that in the George, the, George, the George gauge, you see, okay, this is minus four millimeters. Uh, that this, you provide that and immediately the platform provides you with the percentage of mandibular protrusion. Okay, so you don't need to make this calculation. You put the information, say, okay, four millimeters uh, in, the, in the George gauge, I'm at uh, minus one. And that belongs to 60% of protrusion. It's calculated and it's made uh, automatically. And you can also, for example, uh, customize the degree of mouth opening, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you just go to gold standard, you, you, you need to provide very little information, okay? Uh, this is something that I want to make a big emphasis, okay? You don't need to complicate things if you don't want to. Now, if you feel that you need to complicate things because in that particular patient, the patient needs that degree of customization, then you can provide all this information. This is the slide where you will introduce the information regarding the uh, photos, okay? The pictures of the patient for the customization. Uh, also other images that you feel that are necessary. Also the CVCT, the teleradiography, et cetera. And then you have to tell the lab whether you want a traditional impression or you're going to do an intro, uh, you're going to use an intro or scanner. Well, uh, as a conclusion, I would say that the uh, orthognia and other really, I think uh, as you've seen through my presentation really represents an unprecedented step in the field of maths. It allows for the first time an individualized customization design of the device according to the mandibular kinematics, but even without this individual customization to the mandibular kinematics, the NOAA provides with uh, uh, additional features that are not present in other devices in the market. Mouth control, 
mouth opening control without the use of elastics. And you can also uh, calculate, decide exactly how much you want your patient to be able to open the mouth with the device placed in the mouth um, and other features like the fact that the patient always protrudes when opening the mouth. And actually you can even decide how much you want the patient to be able to protrude when opening the mouth. So uh, as you can see, these kinematic properties of the device really allow us to treat sleep apnea problems and in many cases also temporomandibular disc pathology in a combined way. So in many cases now, you're not uh, going to be limited to use a mat uh, for the treatment of sleep apnea because the patient has temporomandibular joint disorders. In many cases with temporomandibular disorders, it's going to be beneficial for the patient to treat, to use the mat. Yeah. So I would say that uh, we are into a new era in devices and I think it's time to welcome the, uh, the, uh, the Orthoamia NOAA device. So uh, I want to thank uh, uh, the audience for, uh, for being uh, tonight with us. And I will uh, again uh, ask uh, Arnaud if there is any other questions that we, we need to answer to the audience. Um, well, thank you, Dr. Vasquez, for your very extensive uh, elaboration on the uh, NOAA device. I, uh, I enjoyed, and, and especially, the, uh, as already mentioned, the, the fact that we you know, have, a, have another means of con controlling the vertical um, with the device. Um, also looking for, forward to these, these clinical studies, because the, these are, of course, uh, very important for our, uh, you know, uh, implementation, further implementation of new systems. Um, I don't have um, that many additional questions uh, on your last part of your presentation. So if there's not any more questions, uh, and I'm looking at the chat right now, I'd like to give the word back to Pepe. Yeah, Pepe, um, please, can you, um, um, Give us information regarding the uh, how to order the NOAA. Uh... Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, and first of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Pepe Repoles. I'm the managing director for Orthopnea. And I actually I would like to thank you all for attending tonight. I think we have uh, quite a few countries already, not just the uh, from the Benelux in this sense, but from Brazil, Portugal, Sweden, and, and UK in this sense. So, and thanks very much also, Eduardo and uh, Arno. I just wanted to actually thank you all and invite you whenever it's possible uh, with this COVID situation, uh, that you are more than welcome to actually come to our premises. Those are the uh, inner sides of the premises. So we very, uh, very nice in this sense, and especially in Malaga, as, as you can see at the, at the back door of, of of my picture in this sense. So hopefully looking forward to actually finish up all those clinical studies uh, that we're running uh, as we talk in this sense. So hopefully we'll ratify all the success that we're having in the different markets in, in this sense.